everyone, welcome back to Shutter Magazine. I'm Dustin Lucas and today I'm going to be talking about the Canon 5D Mark IV, the RAW files and processing those images in Lightroom. Uh, it's a pretty exciting update that Canon made to this camera. Being a Nikon guy myself, please save your booze for the end of the article video. Um, this is a pretty kick-ass camera. I mean, the abilities you have with it, the dynamic range, um, especially at the low ISOs, which I'm looking at an image here, uh, specifically uh, in Lightroom, looking at a uh, silhouette shot here and kind of give you an idea of uh, you know how this image was shot. So, uh, and starting out with this, you know, and looking at the image, seeing this detail in the shadow, I mean, there's quite a wide range of stops of light here. I mean, we have the sky with the sun at the very, very edge of this uh, hotel roof room. Um, you know, there's uh, some pretty deep shadows in here um, showing some details. So just at capture, I mean, just showing the level of, of dynamic range at capture from, um, you know, these deeper shadows into our sky is just, you know, quite incredible, especially, you know, versus the, uh, you know, earlier digital cameras, as you see with the newer cameras that have been coming out have just had such an increased dynamic range at capture. Uh, this image hasn't been edited, touched, or anything. Um, and to get a little bit into uh, some of the uh, more specifics, uh, let's open this up into develop mode and sort of talk about talk about some of the editing here. So I'm going to kind of put some of those panels away. So uh, with this image, I, I was starting to talk about, you know, being that it's a silhouette shot, you know, you're kind of exposing for the outdoors, you're wanting to sort of black out um, your subject here. Um, but in this image, you know, showing that it's, it's, it was shot a little bit brighter than um, your Sunny 16 roll, right? You know, shooting at F8, uh, excuse me, F16, um, where your ISO speed's gonna match your shutter speed. In this case, uh, you know, with these settings, the ISO 50, shooting at an F-stop of uh, four, uh, your, uh, your shutter speed should be around eight, an eight hundredth of a second. So we're about a third of a stop overexposed, if you will, from that rule, but I think it has good purpose here, you know, just a little bit of an exposure. We can kind of take this image down um, a stop to sort of show, um, you know, what a little closer to exposure outdoors, but I think it gives us a little more detail uh, in the shadows here. Don't want to get into specifics, talking about, uh, you know, crunching numbers, get into a scientific debate about exposures and exposure values and dynamic range. Let's look at the image and talk apples to apples here. So I'm taking an image like this, I'm just going to bump it up a stop and a half uh, and take my image up to here and just to sort of bring out some of those details in the bride here, I'm going to move this panel and just just a subtle amount of uh, detail in the skin here. The skin doesn't start to really break up too much for us, um, but it, it does allow us to kind of you know zoom in here and get a little bit of detail. But as you see, we're losing our sky. And so this is becomes the great debate of, you know, what we were covering the sky, we're lifting the shadows, doing a lot of this HDR kind of has a sort of stigma about it in the photo industry where, um, you know, for the most part, it's, it's just not in good taste. Um, you know, there's uh, people that are completely against it, people that push the envelope of HDR. You know, you can get into this really kind of, really kind of gross image, it's not really, you know, human perspective or sort of how this looked being there in person, um, just kind of has this nasty toning kind of subdued. So, you know, starting out with an image like this, I think lifting the exposure um, to where we're starting to get a little bit of shadows, but maybe we want to bring some of those shadows up to like plus 50 and just kind of seeing, um, bringing a little detail in. We're not, we're not going too crazy. Um, with the back of her, you know, it is a silhouetted shot, but I'd like to bring in some of that detail just so it doesn't go purely black. I mean, the, uh, you know, the idea with this shot isn't to completely crush the, uh, you know, the subject here and just create this kind of nasty, um, nasty silhouetted image. So in bringing that detail out, take it back to where we had it. Kind of lifting it there. We want to bring our um, sky back in and if we take it all the way down you see how kind of nasty it gets in our dress here we really want to be careful careful with those highlight tones so highlights are something that we don't want to necessarily crush or you know completely remove from the image uh, those highlights can give a nice little contrast but just dropping down the ability to keep our sky a little bit closer to what was as shot um, as well as with these shadows and where they're lifted 
So in looking at an image like this, um, you know, moving into uh, you know other panels, we're just kind of working with exposure, highlights, shadows. Um, you know, nothing too fancy yet, right? So as we move down into our panel, something that you really want to start looking into is the details, right? So as you notice, we're looking at this image. Um, you know, one to one preview. It's not loading. Uh, we can load our preview here. If we go back to grid mode, uh, zoom in here. As you notice, as my uh, my image has to reload, it's building a one to one uh, preview. But as you notice, and we talk a little bit about previews, and um, you know, not to get in a, a long winded conversation, if we built a smart preview for this image. Working with the detail panel, it's so important to be working with one-to-one -one pixels. Um, and I'll show you here really quickly how this image can change. Get rid of some of our other previews here. As you see, we have our original and our smart preview. Let's do this. Yeah, let's get rid of our original so that way that image is completely gone here. Folder location. We'll do this to the desktop. Go ahead and merge. Now we have just our smart preview. And as you see, when we zoom in, we're starting to get a little bit pixelated. We can't get in as far um, with this image. So if we zoom into two to one, we start to get a little pixelated. We have a much lower resolution file, and it's something you don't want to be using. Uh, when working uh, in the details panel, you know you want to have as all the pixels present um, in Lightroom. So it's very important we're not working on a smart preview, um, but we are working with a. Let's go ahead and relink this file. We are working with the actual original. That's really important here. So just want to kind of show you um, the difference between um, working with the smart preview. And your lack of resolution here. Let's go ahead and close that out. Open this back up. So we're going to go ahead and just relink our file. Do that really quickly here. Go through my clutter of folders, and we're going to add this back in. So we got original and our smart preview back. And what I can do, just to ensure we're not working on our smart preview, is I can I can click on this. I discard my smart preview altogether. Very important. So now we just have our original photo. Now let's get back to what we were working with. So we're going to load for a second or a few seconds. And we're going to look at some noise reduction here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase this noise reduction to give us a little bit of softening with some of that noise that we introduced. Now, even though we're working with a, let's see, why is there no loading? Uh, 
now to get rid of the loading. So one thing when we're working with uh, low ISOs is the thought is, wow, it's going to have you know a lot less noise, um, and that's true. Uh, you know, for most cases, whenever you're shooting at the correct exposure, you know, an important part of lifting the exposure and working with the low ISO is it's going to have less noise, but not necessarily no noise. So that's something that we still need to correct and, and think about. You know, if you're shooting at um, a low ISO like this, you're going to have a little more dynamic range ability to uh, maneuver the exposure and get a little more detail out of those areas, but you're still going to have, you're still going to be struggling with some of that noise. And I'll show you in just a second, not having any noise reduction on this image. Now we don't want to remove it. We don't want to remove it all. I mean, need, there needs to be some, um, some noise. So this image looks realistic. But if we turn this off, you can really see the difference and how splotchy the skin is, especially because of the color noise. We turn this back on and it just, slightly smooths that over. Now it starts to look a little fake and a little a little too soft. So that's where we bring in some sharpening. The sharpening is going to bring back some of that detail and some a little bit of that noise too. So that way it kind of goes back to its original original look. Now we're um you know we're comparing this image over here. Let's swap these. Go ahead and swap that at it. I'm going to turn off both of these. And now, as we can see, our difference between our no noise reduction and our noise reduction and sharpening, and they look pretty close. Um, and it's it's not too much of a change. One thing we want to know, what we want to look at as well is making sure we're not um, softening or losing any detail in our dress. Um, as we're zooming in here, my computer's trying to play a little catch up. Um, our detail looks pretty good as well. So uh, the sharpness between both of those look good. So um, just uh, you know, definitely something to consider. I mean, even with this, the low noise of this uh, this camera body and the ISO, I just want to kind of show off the uh, the ability. You know, we lifted this image two stops of exposure, about uh, you know one and three quarters of a stop, and didn't get a whole lot of noise. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Um, some other things we want to look at, you know, with the sharpenings that, you know, even the Lightroom's missing, the lens fall off um, with the sharpening. Let me zoom out here. As my computer sort of slowly working here. Um, seem to be getting a little bit of a delay. Still going down here. Bear with me. Okay, well, I guess we're just going to force quit that and reopen it. Lightroom wasn't too happy with me. Um, but what I was getting at was the, the Lightroom doesn't have a lens fall off option, unfortunately, so there is a little bit of a A little bit of an advantage with a program like Capture One, and so with uh, with that, we're ha we have a little bit of lens fall off here on the uh, on the edge of the lens. That's just because of the aperture that was being used, um, but it has the ability to, on top of the input sharpening that this detail panel has, it allows you to see a pretty good pretty good edge detail that it brings in. I mean, we can start messing with the radius to increase that. I I tend to leave this at its default setting as well. But when we really move down um, and starting to work with, and I find this to be a, you know, pretty interesting conversation with camera profiles and, you know, different, different takes on those things. Um, you know, the camera profiles that Adobe sort of uses to interpret similar to what the manufacturer's profiles are. Now, if you're using the Canon DPP software, um, the Digital Photo Processor, I think is what it's called, um, or Digital Photo Professional, um, it's a, uh, these profiles here are set up to sort of mimic um, those, those proprietary profiles. And as you know, on Adobe Standard, um, 
you know, that's Adobe, Adobe's interpretation of uh, the sensor and the, the camera profile and what these colors should be interpreted as. Um, and as we change these different settings, it starts to have a, uh, starts to really change the colors. Um, you know, that makes the blues a little more blue, the skin tones. Um, those things start to get adjusted a little bit more as well. This is camera neutral, doesn't look too great. Camera standard. You also, um, it's added the um, cano, uh, camera monochromatic, so you can, um, similar to how it was shot in camera in black and white, I thought that was an interesting addition for uh, the Canon cameras that normally was more of a Nikon, more of a Nikon change. Um, but you have the, uh, you know, your different camera profiles that you can apply. A lot of times the camera neutral or camera portrait or, or something that, you know, I, I generally stick with. Um, you have to be careful with the, as you can see how much warmer this made our image, uh, you know, just for, just from applying that. But it it definitely has a pretty pretty great effect uh, on the image as a whole. But um, you know, in tinkering around and playing with the these raw files, I mean, you really get a, a chance to. I'm going to swap these out. You really get a chance to you know, pull up some details into the shadows, drop the highlights down, really kind of take this image beyond just a kind of gimmicky HDR image and really start to change, um, you know, your at capture and get, you know, a little more detail. I mean, I kind of have two different images here. I can work with the silhouette on the left and, and kind of darken this. And now I can start to work with more of a, a room exposure, you know, bring in some details to the back of the bride. Um, and really allows me that flexibility with these raw files. And of course, you know, shooting with any brand camera or model, it's you're always best to um, work with, uh, raw files versus JPEGs. You know, you're going to have a lot more flexibility in these exposure and the dynamic range um, and those kind of things. And so I just wanted to kind of demo this, uh, you know, this camera. It's a, you know, if I didn't, wasn't so invested in Nikon glass myself, I would uh, certainly make the jump. I know there's a, been a lot of talk about the buffering on the 5D Mark IV, which has been a huge relief from the Mark III and things like that. But if you guys have any questions, definitely reach out. Um, that's all I have for you in Lightroom. Definitely check out uh, my later articles, I think I want to take the uh, some of these RAW files and run them through different RAW processors like Capture One. Um, On One just came out with their RAW, uh, their their new RAW processor. Um, you know the DxO software, as well as um, you know waiting for you know more updates with Lightroom and catching up. Also, uh, stay tuned. I'm going to work with that dual pixel um, options that right now are only working in the Canon software, but as soon as Lightroom has some updates. Um, that's something I definitely want to attack and get into. I know that's uh, probably something the uh, majority of the listeners out there are interested in hearing me talk about, about the you know, majority of what you know we're working in in Lightroom. I definitely want to attack that later on. So definitely uh, you know, stay tuned for those articles and reach out if you have any questions.